Soaps and detergents are commonly used as cleaning agents. In this video, we'll discuss the chemistry behind why they are effective as cleaning agents. Let's start with soaps. Soap is formed from a reaction called base-driven hydrolysis of triglycerides, which is a scientific name for fats. An example of a soap molecule is shown here, and we'll talk about this in more detail later. Now, triglycerides are these large molecules of fats that consist of two parts, fatty acids and glycerol. We'll now look at what fatty acids and glycerol are. Fatty acids are organic molecules that consist of a carboxylic acid functional group and a long hydrocarbon chain. Essentially, fatty acids are carboxylic acids with lots of carbon atoms. Now, the hydrocarbon chain can either be saturated, where the carbon atoms are joined together by only single bonds, or unsaturated, where there can be presence of some carbon to carbon double bonds. An example of a saturated and unsaturated fatty acid are shown over here. This very concept of saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids are shown in most nutrition labels as saturated and unsaturated fats. Glycerol is an organic molecule with three alcohol functional groups. Each functional group of alcohol is attached to a different carbon atom as shown here. Therefore, the systematic name of glycerol is 1,2,3-tripropanol. Since the alcohol functional group is very polar and able to form hydrogen bonds with water, glycerol is usually very soluble in water. A solution of glycerol is shown here. Now, in order to understand the formation of triglyceride from fatty acids and glycerol, I want to remind you of the formation of esters. Esters are formed from a condensation reaction from a carboxylic acid and alcohol functional group. Besides forming the ester molecule, a water molecule is also formed as a byproduct. And this reaction here is reversible. Here's an example of esterification, whereby ethanoic acid reacts with one propanol to produce propyl ethanoate, which is the ester, and a molecule of water. The reaction between glycerol and fatty acids is an example of esterification as three alcohol functional groups will react with three individual carboxylic acids of the fatty acid molecules. And this produces one large molecule of triglyceride. It is important here to notice that a triglyceride molecule contains three ester functional groups, as I'm circling right now. As we saw earlier, a molecule of water is produced whenever an ester functional group is formed. So in this case, since there are three ester functional groups in the triglyceride molecule being formed, three water molecules are also produced as a byproduct. Like normal esterification, the synthesis of triglyceride from fatty acids is reversible. The reverse reaction is called hydrolysis. The triglyceride is broken down to reform a glycerol molecule and three fatty acid molecules. Let's finally talk about the production of soaps. Soaps are produced via base-driven hydrolysis of a triglyceride. Instead of using water, base-driven hydrolysis uses a concentrated solution of a strong base, such as sodium hydroxide, to break the ester bonds in the triglyceride molecule. This produces a molecule glycerol, but instead of producing three fatty acids, three equivalents of salts are produced, as shown here in the blue box. This is because the presence of a strong base, that is in this case sodium hydroxide, strips off protons from the fatty acid to form their conjugate bases. Then the conjugate bases will form salts with the metal ions, that is the sodium ions, in the base. These salts that we've just produced from reacting a molecule of triglyceride with sodium hydroxide are our soap molecules. Let's delve into the structure of a soap. The structure of a soap molecule is usually divided into two parts, a long hydrocarbon tail and a smaller carboxylate head. The hydrocarbon tail is nonpolar, whereas the carboxylate head is polar due to its negative charge. As a result, the tail is described as hydrophobic as it dislikes water, which is polar, and the head is described as hydrophilic as it likes water. The structure of soap explains its cleaning action when it comes to the removal of grease or oil. Normally, oil and water do not mix due to the differences in polarity. Water dissolves polar compounds 
whereas oil and grease are both nonpolar in nature. Soap molecules are able to overcome this difference in polarity by acting as an emulsifier. An emulsifier creates an emulsion, which is when oil droplets are suspended in water. We'll talk about this in a moment. Now, the polar hydrophilic heads of soap molecules dissolve in water, whereas the non-polar hydrophobic tails dissolve in the oil or grease. Essentially, as shown in the diagram here, this allows the soap molecules to act as a connecting bridge between the oil and the water surfaces. Let's pretend we have a grease particle lying on a surface that we want to remove using soap. When a solution of soap is added to the surface, the non-polar hydrophobic tails of the soap molecules are embedded in the grease particle, as you can see here. While the hydrophilic heads, which are the purple circles, dissolve very nicely in water due to their hydrophilic or polar properties. This is exactly the same as the emulsion that we saw earlier. Now, as more and more soap molecules form this bridge between the water and the grease particle, the grease particle is eventually lifted off the surface. When the grease particle is completely surrounded by soap molecules, a structure called a micelle is formed. The production of soaps in a classroom setting is very similar to that of esters as they are effectively the same chemical reaction. Firstly, a certain oil is heated with a gradual addition of a strong base solution such as sodium hydroxide. In this experiment, reflux is essential as the oil is being used, whether it's vegetable oil or animal fats, are very volatile substances. And the condensation setup in reflux helps to prevent the loss of these oils by returning them into a liquid state. The soap, when formed, will be in a solid form and thus can be easily isolated from the mixture using filtration. In this particular scenario, a vacuum filtration is used in sponification because the high viscosity of oil makes it very difficult to remove from the soap if a suction force is not being used in normal filtration. Now, we've talked about how soap is produced from triglyceride or fats. All forms of triglycerides are examples of biomass as they are derived from plants or animals. Plant-based triglycerides are known as vegetable oils and animal-based triglycerides are simply called animal fats. Since soaps are produced from biomass, they are biodegradable. A downside of soaps is that they cannot be used in acidic solutions as the higher concentration of hydrogen ions can convert the hydrophilic carboxylate head into a fatty acid, which reduces the polarity and the hydrophilic nature of the molecule. This in turn decreases the effectiveness of soap in acidic solutions. Soaps also cannot be used in hard water, which is water with high concentrations of calcium and magnesium ions. This is because calcium and magnesium ions will react with soap molecules to form a precipitate called scum. This is pretty much insoluble pieces of solid that are easily formed and seen when a person uses soap with hard water. It's important to understand that the disadvantage of soap led to the development of detergents. In other words, detergents, which are also cleaning agents, overcome the limitations of soap so that they can be used in acidic solutions and with hard water. Detergents are substances that are synthetic, as opposed to soaps which are derived from natural sources, also known as biomass. As we go through the three different types of detergents, which are anionic, cationic, and non-ionic detergents, focus on the similarity and differences between detergents and soaps. Namely, the similarity is that they both have hydrophilic tails and hydrophilic heads, but they differ in terms of structure, their properties, and also applications or uses. Anionic detergents consist of a long, nonpolar hydrophobic tail and a hydrophilic head that has a negative charge, hence the name of the detergent. Now, there are many examples of anionic detergents, but the most commonly used example in the syllabus is one of a sulfate ion head. These detergents are much more effective than the fat-derived soaps when it comes to cleaning action. They can generate more foam when it comes to removing greases off surfaces. The typical applications of these detergents are in laundry detergents and dishwashing liquids. 
Cationic detergents are quite similar to those of anionic detergents. The structure also consists of a non-polar hydrophobic tail, and in this case, a hydrophilic head that has a positive charge. A common example of such a detergent is a tertiary ammonium ion head, where the nitrogen atom possesses this positive charge. The most common and unique application of cationic detergents is in hair conditioners. Non-ion detergents, as the name suggests, refers to molecules with non-polar hydrophobic tails and a hydrophilic head that has no charges but is polar in nature. The non-ionic head is able to dissolve in water very easily as the oxygen atom of these ether functional groups can accept hydrogen bonds from the hydrogen atoms of water. At the same time, the presence of these alcohol groups at the end of the head is also able to donate hydrogen bonds. Thus, despite the fact that these detergents do not possess any charges, they can still act as very effective emulsifiers when it comes to oil and water mixtures. Non-ionic detergents are typically found in front-loading washing machines and dishwashing liquids. Let's compare the structure of certain detergents in a bit more detail. So as we talked about earlier, soap structure consists of the conjugate base of the fatty acid that was being used and the metal ion that is derived from the strong base used in its production. The hydrophilic head, specifically, it is a carboxylate head. And the hydrophobic tail, of course, consists of a long hydrocarbon chain. In contrast, the structure of detergents vary depending on the type, as we discussed earlier, whether it's anionic, cationic, or non-ionic. Detergents are not produced from vegetable oils or animal fats, as they are purely synthetic. The hydrophilic head, as we just said, varies depending on the type of detergent. However, most of the hydrophilic tails also consist of hydrocarbon chains. Both soap and detergents act as emulsifiers which are substances that allow for the suspension of oil droplets in a larger volume of water. They are also described as surfactants, which are chemicals that are able to reduce the tension between oil and water surfaces. Now, emulsifiers and surfactants, these two words are often confused as they are used interchangeably to describe soaps and detergents. Just to clarify, Surfactants are a particular type of emulsifiers. They are able to create the suspension of oil in water by reducing the surface tension between the two types of substances. Soap are produced from biomass, so they are biodegradable, whereas detergents, which are synthetic, are less biodegradable. So this is one of the disadvantages of using detergents when compared to soaps. However, soaps can form insoluble precipitates when we use with hard water called scum, and this greatly reduces the effectiveness and its practicality when it comes to these situations. Detergents generally have better cleaning action than soaps, and they remain effective in hard water as the structures do not form precipitates when there are lots of calcium and magnesium ions. Finally, soap cannot be used in acidic solutions due to the protonation of its hydrophilic head when there are lots of protons around, whereas detergents can be used in acidic solutions without any reduction in its effectiveness.